What is going on everybody? Welcome back. This is a video I'm really excited to bring to you guys. I've spent a lot of time putting these graphics together. So this is going to be a fun one. It will be the top three team needs for every team as we approach the 2021 off season. Before we get started, I want to let you guys know I'm going to be doing a live stream here on YouTube. I believe it's at four o'clock Eastern next Wednesday is when the legal tampering period starts. We're going to start to get that big wave of news and free agent transactions. So I'm going to be here live reacting with you guys. And again, guys, make sure you set some notifications on your phone for draft night as well. I'll be doing a similar stream. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, please do hit that like button. We're going to start in the AFC North with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you'll also notice down below kind of a tiering system. I color coded all these guys based on sort of how good they are. Now, obviously there are different splits inside of these tiers that we could really get into, but this is kind of a snapshot of uh, how I would be valuing these players as we head into next year. Anyway, offensive tackle is gonna be my number one need for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you'll also notice that these are layered as far as positional value as well. If a team needs a running back like the Steelers do and they also need an offensive tackle, I'm gonna put the offensive tackle higher because it is a more valuable position. So that's just a little inside look into how I did this a little bit. But you've got Alejandro Villanueva, ready to hit the market. They might be able to bring him back, but again, that makes it a team need. He's not currently on the roster and they're gonna need to either get him back or someone else. So that's kind of how this works. Alejandro Villanueva, starting this one off with the tongue twisters, is set to hit the market. He's one of the top tackle guys out there and the Steelers don't have a ton of cap space, but it's not just him. That right tackle position is an issue as well. They have currently Chukwuma Okwara for, now they do have Matt Filer as their right guard. Uh, but he's also a free agent. So the offensive line has become a sneaky need for the Steelers really across the board, uh, but that offensive tackle spot being the most critical portion of that line for them. So a core of four maybe could start next year, but even if he does come in as a starter next year, that left tackle spot is a question mark. Then at running back, pretty self-explanatory here. I just don't feel great about any of these guys as the starter next year as James Conner is set to hit free agency. I've been mocking them, uh, Damian Harris, quite a bit in the first round, and getting a top running back I think would really be nice for this team to increase both the floor and ceiling of that running game. And then cornerback is creeping up as a need. I, I like Joe Hayden. I like Steven Nelson. I don't know if Joe Hayden's actually going to be back next year. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets cut before I release this video, to be honest. Uh, but either way, you have some starters there, but both of your slot corners are also hitting the market in Mike Hilton and Cameron Sutton, two really good players. So you've got some veteran guys that are not the long-term answers and your slot is up. So definitely somewhere the Steelers could target. Then the Cleveland Browns, edge rusher, are going to be at the top of the list here. Yeah, you've got Miles Garrett there, but with Vernon hitting free agency and Adrian Claiborne uh, getting cut, huge need here for the Browns. You want a complimentary piece to Miles Garrett. You do have Porter Gustin, but he's more of an early down run defender. Uh, some developmental pieces there. Curtis Weaver, an interesting guy on the depth chart right now. But yeah, they definitely are going to be looking to add an edge either in free agency or through the draft. Off-ball linebacker. It's not a desperate need. This is a really good Browns roster. Some of these teams will have three desperate needs on this list. Others, maybe not so desperate. But you've got Sion Taki Taki, who's been okay as kind of that outside linebacker, run defending kind of sideline guy. Uh, you've got Mac Wilson, who's shown some flashes in coverage. Your middle linebacker, though, BJ Goodson, is hitting the market. Mac, uh, Malcolm Smith was a starter for them last year. It's definitely a need, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just let these guys hang out and develop this group either. But linebacker is a common mock draft uh, position for the Browns. And then the um, quarterback position here, you got Denzel Ward, you're good there. Greedy Williams is definitely promising, but just hasn't been able to show much. He's had a hard time staying healthy, which is a part of why he fell in the draft. So you don't really want to lean on him. You got Robert Jackson, who started a playoff game for this team. Terrence Mitchell and Kelvin uh, Kevin Johnson hitting the free agent block. So they're going to want to bring in somebody. I don't know if they'll draft this position too high. I think they probably like Greedy, but definitely a spot to upgrade there. Then the Baltimore Ravens. <laughs> this team has a glaring problem at edge rush. The benefit of this is the Ravens do a really good job with this group. And I actually think they feel pretty good about what Jalen Ferguson can bring for them. But look at all of the guys hitting free agency here. Matt Judon, Ngakwe, 
Pernell McPhee and Tyus Bowser. All those guys had uh, de decent stretches, I would say, for them in 2020. So obvious need there. That's one of the biggest glaring holes. Luckily, this team has a type that they usually don't have to invest too much in to get it. Uh, but let's just say the pipeline has kind of run dry there. They got to replenish that group. Then the interior offensive line is a big problem. Makari, Bozeman, Powers, they can start and you'll survive, but they want to be better than that. They want to run the ball really well. Ever since Yander retired, they've had a hard time uh, getting that, that group you know, to play well. I know it's just one season, but uh, Ravens fans aren't going to disagree with this one. Matt Skura hitting the market as well. And then you got wide receiver. Big need here. A lot of Ravens fans clamoring for a receiver. I do like Marquise Brown. I think he's better than he gets credit for, despite some inconvenient drops. And then Devin Duvernay, I think, is actually going to step up really well in the slot for Willie Sneed. Now, you're not really banking on Miles Boykin to kind of become that big-bodied perimeter player, but I, I think he could survive there. But I do think they upgrade, whether it's in free agency with like a Kenny Galladay or through the draft with like a Terrace Marshall or something like that, uh, but definitely a need. I, I do agree there, though I just don't think it's quite as pressing as a lot of Ravens fans uh, seem to want to make it. Then we got the Cincinnati Bengals. Offensive line, through and through, offensive tackle, and interior offensive line here. So at the tackle spot, I love me Jonah Williams, absolutely. But Bobby Hart, it, 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 you just don't want him starting at right tackle for Joe Burrow, who's coming off an ACL injury. The depth there is miserable. So they got to get a tackle, whether it's Panay Sewell in the draft or uh, someone in free agency, they got to find an option there. Glaring need at right tackle. And then interior offensive line as well. I think Trey Hopkins can start there. Quentin Spain was kind of a fringe backup replacement level starter. It was not very good for them, but he's a veteran that's played a lot of football. So he could potentially start there, but you don't feel very good about it. Michael Jordan, Billy Price, can't count on those guys. So you want to upgrade probably both guard spots here for the Bengals. And then the edge rush, also a need after they just let Carl Lawson go. I broke that down on the podcast yesterday. Kind of a big mistake in my opinion, but uh, Carlos Dunlap is gone. All you really have is Sam Hubbard, who is fringe you know, kind of on the fringe of quality starter, replacement level starter. He's fine. He's like a number two dude, really good in run defense, but don't feel great about him. Khalid Kareem, similar kind of younger version of Sam Hubbard, but you don't have anyone that can get after the quarterback here. It's a big need for the Bengals, a team that has a lot of big needs. On to the AFC East, we've got the Buffalo Bills. So offensive tackle, a bigger glaring need than I expected. Just like the Bengals, they have their left tackle, but they need a right tackle. Daryl Williams set to hit free agency. I'm not sure they'll be able to afford him or not. And their backup plan, their tie in Sicky is also up. So tackle's a big need. Wouldn't be surprised if uh, they start to, uh, you know, look in the draft there, right tackle. Then off ball linebacker, Tremaine Edmonds, he hasn't quite developed as much as you'd want, but he's still really young. I'm, I'm counting on him, but AJ Klein, replacement level starter there. I keep an eye on Andre Smith. He's an interesting piece there. But with Matt, Matt Milano, impending free agent, they would love to get a better cover player in there. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on Matt Milano and coverage in that scheme. And I, I think they want either Milano back or someone else. Then interior defensive line, Ed Oliver, again, kind of projecting there. I, I still like Ed Oliver, but he has not worked out as well as you would hope. Vernon Butler, Harrison Phillips, Justin Zimmer. It, it's just not a very good group. Quentin Jefferson just got cut uh, as of today for this recording. So huge need there on the interior defensive line. Line play in general is a need for the Bills. You could also throw guard and edge in there. Then the Miami Dolphins, offensive tackle here at the top of this list, Austin Jackson, young guy, can probably become a starter at some point, but don't feel great about him. Robert Hunt, I'm actually really low on him, especially as a tackle. I think he'd be a quality guard. He was one of my top guards in last year's class. They just got Isaiah Wilson, but I just, I'm not comfortable banking on either of those guys, especially, you know, that's to his blind side at that right tackle. So look for Pene Sewell here for the Dolphins, if not, maybe different piece, but I definitely think they need to upgrade the offensive line, especially a tackle. Uh, and, you know, I think Robert Hunt, Isaiah Wilson, those guys can kick inside, but they do need a center as well. So offensive line across the board, really. And then wide receiver, they do have some depth here and you like Devontae Parker, but he's honestly, he's like a fringe star quality starter. I hesitated to give him the true star grade there, but he, I, I gave it to him. I do like him, but Preston Williams, Lynn Bowden, Albert Wilson, don't know if he'll be back. You got Jakeem Grant. 
it's just not a very good group. Uh, they need to upgrade some playmakers there. And then off-ball linebacker is a sneaky need for this team. Landon Roberts, Camus Grugier hill both got significant playing time last year, set to hit the market. Jerome Baker also, I believe, in the last year of his contract. So definitely a spot that the uh, Dolphins can look to upgrade. Then the New England Patriots quarterback, obviously a need here. You got Jarrett Stidham, Jacob Delagala, that speaks for itself. I don't know if Cam Newton will be back or if they draft someone, but that's an obvious one. Wide receiver is a need here. Don't forget about Marquise Lee, who is uh, going to be coming back from the opt-out. I think he can have a role on this team. Julian Edelman, if he can get healthy. Jacoby Myers. There's some stuff to work with, but you need a true number one here. And, and frankly, you could really use a kind of gimmick playmaker type as well as a bunch of those in this class. So maybe you sign a Kenny Galladay and draft, say, I don't know, Kadarius Tony or uh, Jalen Darden, perhaps, but uh, and Keel Harry there as a backup slash project. He has officially busted out, in my opinion. And then tight end, a big need as well. We know this t this team, when they are at their best, loves those tight ends. They do get Matt Lacoste back from the opt out. Don't forget about him, but not someone you're really excited about. You got Izzo, Asiasi, and Keen in year two, but definitely a spot they could get a quality starter. Then the new regime of the New York Jets, you could put a lot of positions on here. There's probably going to be some disagreement with Jets fans because they do need a lot of positions. But the one I put at the top was interior offensive line. I don't mind Connor McGovern at center, but definitely somewhere you could even upgrade there. And the two guards are just non-starters, so that's self-explanatory. Wide receiver, you know, Jamison Crowder gets slept on a little bit. I do believe in Denzel Mims. Barrio showed some nice things. Uh, but he's a backup to Crowder. So you need another guy on the outside, uh, whether it's Darnold or Zach Wilson here, you just, you got to give him more weapons. And then at tight end also, you know, Chris Herndon last year of his deal, he's fine. You know, you could put tight end here, running back, quarterback, so many needs for the New York Jets, uh, but tight end could certainly be upgraded here for the Jets as well. Then the Tennessee Titans was really weird to see how many needs this team has. Their roster is really falling apart here and they don't have a ton of cap space. So starting at wide receiver, look at this depth chart after AJ Brown. I mean, my goodness, they have nobody. So they got to upgrade their edge rush, a huge need, Harold Landry, and then again, nobody. And then cornerback, it's a little bit better, but you're letting Malcolm Butler go, Desmond Kings. So do you lean on Christian Fulton in year two? And even then you need a slot guy. So uh, some pretty uh, glaring needs there for the Tennessee Titans. Then the Indianapolis Colts, offensive tackle, that left tackle spot, a glaring weakness. Obviously nobody here that you feel good about stepping in for Anthony Costanzo. That's a one of the biggest positions on the field. So they got to get that figured out. And then on the edge, another kind of sneaky need for the Colts here. You got Toure and Lewis, a couple of second round picks, Ben Bonigo. So do they bank on them to develop or do they go the free agent round? Get like a Carl Lawson in there, Houston and uh, uh, Muhammad are said to be free agents. I, I bet they bring Muhammad back because he's going to be cheap and he fits their system really well. Uh, but he's not a pass rusher. So edge rush is a big need for them. And then at corner, another big need. They are frequently mocked corner in mock drafts. Uh, so you got Kenny Moore, but he's in the slot. You feel good about him. Beyond him, though, I mean, it's, it's not looking good. You got Rocky Sin, who hasn't quite worked out yet. I bet they feel okay about him starting. But again, he's been hit or miss. Isaiah Rogers, can he step outside of his kick return role? Traymond Smith, you're not feeling good about them. Xavier Rhodes and TJ Carey are set for free agency. So some pretty big needs here for the Colts who have a well-rounded roster, but some pretty glaring needs there. Then the Houston Texans, I could have just put everything, uh, but there are a top three needs for them. Edge rusher being at the top of that list. So JJ Watt on his way out. Uh, Whitney Merciless though, I only have him as a replacement level starter. He was really not good last year. Charles Amenihu, more trending upwards, but is he an edge, an interior? Hard to kind of define what he's going to be based on uh, the fact that we don't know what their system's going to be. Jacob Martin, kind of a low level starting edge outside linebacker. Grenard, kind of a project. Edge of four can't stay healthy. So they need some starters. Uh, on the edge. And then interior defensive line, same thing. They're, they're super young, but I don't feel good about any of these guys starting. Blacklock, PJ Hall. So they're losing Carlos Watkins. They need defensive line across the board and cornerbacks. So this defense is in a rough spot. You do have Bradley Roby there. I like what he showed last year. Eric Murray, kind of a slot safety hybrid. But beyond him, 
You're losing Gary and Conley. You're losing Vernon Hargraves. They need corner bad. Then the Jacksonville Jaguars. I just left quarterback off because it's, it's effectively filled. Like we, we know Trevor Lawrence is a Jaguar. Uh, so I just left that off. But uh, on the defense, cornerback is a huge need. I, I like CJ Henderson. I gave him the benefit of the doubt as a quality starter. I think you feel pretty good about him. But you got veterans in Melvin and Herndon coming back. They're, yeah, whatever. You got some youth there that you're not banking on. So I think getting a, you know, some upside and a, a long-term starter at corner and they need some help in the slot as well. So that's a huge need for the Jags. Tight end is brutal on this team. Josh Oliver is terrible at football and he's their best tight end right now. So that's that says enough right there. And then offensive tackle is still a need in my opinion. Yeah, you franchise tag Cam Robinson. Yeah, you got Jawan Taylor. You're drafting Trevor Lawrence first overall. You don't want a Joe Burrow situation where he's not getting good protection. Uh, invest in getting real quality protection there, not just like low-end starter types of, of guys like Taylor and Cam Robinson and lots of other needs here for the Jags as well. But those are the three I went with. Next, we've got the defending AFC champion, Kansas City Chiefs, all about the offensive line here for a couple different reasons. So on the interior offensive line, you could survive there, but you've got uh, LDT coming back. Uh, but beyond that, Andrew Wiley, Nick Allegretti, Steven Wisniewski, you don't feel great about any of those guys starting. Wiley, maybe, but you're losing your starting center in Austin Reader, so they need at least another starting caliber piece in there. And then at tackle, not so pressing, but when Patrick Mahomes is your quarterback, you need more of a long-term plan here. Lucas Niang is a project that they drafted in the fourth round last year, but Schwartz didn't did he play at all last year? I think he played a little bit early, couldn't stay healthy. And Eric Fisher coming off an Achilles injury in the last year of his contract. This team needs to find out a real answer, a long-term offensive tackle for Patrick Mahomes in there, or they're asking for trouble. We already started to see him get kind of banged up under all the pressure he was under. So uh, for a couple different reasons there, offensive line is a huge need this offseason for the Chiefs. And then over to the defense, edge rush. If Frank Clark, it's hard to even call him a quality starter. He's paid so much. It's hard to, you know, not be totally down on the guy. He's fine. But beyond him, look at this depth chart. I mean, Mike Dana, Damone Harris, you got nothing there. So Chiefs have some pretty damn big needs sneakily as we head into this offseason. They don't have a lot of room to improve those spots either. So keep an eye on that. Then the LA Chargers offensive line again the AFC West offensive tackle left tackle specifically huge need but even Brian Bulaga just unreliable from a health standpoint Pipkins and Norton are like decent backups but man they gotta they gotta find a left tackle that's one of the most common mock draft spots is left tackle for the Chargers and then on the interior it's not much better this does not look good Trey Turner was miserable last year his worst year for sure Scott Kesenberry's serviceable but you don't feel great about it uh, you're losing a bunch of pieces there. They got to go offensive line big time here for the Chargers. And tight end, they don't even have a starter right now. So there's some pretty big needs on that offense right now. Then for the Raiders, they created this whole themselves offensive tackle. They just traded away Trent Brown. Sam Young was a decent backup uh, for them. But I, I think they feel pretty good about finding someone to, to step up into that spot. But th there you go. They got to find someone first. Uh, edge rush, uh, Raiders fans, a lot of them are going to disagree with this. Furl's a quality starter, but only because he's one of the best run defending edges in the league. Crosby, Nassib, they can do some things to get after the quarterback, but this team's pass rush was so bad last year. You cannot lean on Furl, Crosby, and Nassib, any of these guys, to be your number one. Uh, so they need to go and get a legitimate threat off the edge to help this defense out. And then safety as well, a huge need. Jonathan Abram is your starting strong safety. That's fine. You need a free safety here. You need a safety that can actually freaking cover here. I don't feel good about Jeff Heath doing that. Eric Harris is leaving. So lots of team, uh, lots of needs for this Raiders team here. Then the Denver Broncos. Quarterback is their top need, in my opinion. If you believe in Drew Locke, that's fine. I don't. I consider him a, a backup project quarterback that just happens to be starting. So uh, if they can upgrade there, they absolutely should cornerback is a glaring need often mocked for the Broncos with that ninth spot uh, they do have Bryce Callahan who's you know kind of like you know poor man's Chris Harris in a lot of ways you can play from the slot a little bit outside OJ Moody has so, showed some decent things you feel okay about him as a starter 
uh, next year after his rookie season. But uh, losing Bouye here, they, they need another corner for sure. And then off-ball linebacker is a need. you got Alexander Johnson, who's kind of a sneaky good starter. Not the best in coverage, but a good player. And then Josie Jewell, they just they could use an influx of like speed and athleticism at that off-ball linebacker position. Now into the NFC with the Green Bay Packers, you'll sense a theme here where they have kind of a superstar at the top and then a serious lack of talent behind those guys at these critical positions. That starts at cornerback. I was just totally exposed in the NFC Championship, uh, but it wasn't just that. They, they're losing Kevin King here. They have a massive need at corner. Shannon Sullivan's fine as a slot guy, but they need to find someone that can start on the outside opposite of Jair Alexander. Wide receiver, I keep saying this is a need for them. They could survive with these guys, but why not give Rodgers a, a legitimate starter opposite of Devonta Adams? Scantling can't be trusted quite yet, though he showed some signs. Lazard is just kind of fell off and is eh. Devin Funches, they do get him back after the opt-out. Uh, but I still think this team would benefit significantly from opening up this offense with uh, a, a legit separator underneath uh, next to Devonta Adams. And then offensive tackle, it's going to be interesting to see what they do here after they cut Ricky Wagner. There's been conversations about uh, potentially moving uh, Elton Jenkins out to right tackle. Billy Turner has some flexibility. John Runyon. Uh, but they could also go there in the draft as well. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, but it is a need as they sit here right now. Then Da Bears, no surprise here. Quarterback, big need. You got backup starting and Nick Foles right now. And I don't think they have any plans of him starting next year. Trubisky's gone. So that's easy right there. And then safety and interior defensive line. Really sneaky needs here for the Bears because you're kind of sheltered by how top heavy these groups are. You got Eddie Jackson at safety, but look at look at the depth chart after him. They don't have a starter next to him, and a lot of teams like to go with you know three safeties, especially in this system that's going to kind of model the Fangio defense. Uh, so keep an eye on what they do at safety there. Interior defensive line is actually also a need as well. Look at all these guys hitting the market. John Jenkins, Roy Robertson-Harris, Mario Edwards, Brent Urban, all guys that got significant reps last year. And Akeem Hicks has had a really hard time staying healthy. And he's getting up there in age. So that's a huge need for this Bears defense. I think they could get some of those guys back, but it doesn't mean it isn't a need. And then the Minnesota Vikings, offensive guard, a glaring need. So Ezra Cleveland's an interesting case study there. Do they still see him as a long-term tackle? Are they happy with what he did at guard? Either way, you need another guard opposite of him, and none of these guys are options. That's just a massive issue for them. Interior defensive line is a big, big problem for this team as well. They do get... Michael Pierce back, which will be nice, but he's not a pass rusher. Shamar Steffen, just up there in age, doesn't really do much for you. Got some prospects there, but you need a, a legitimate you need depth and you need a legitimate starter next to Michael Pierce. Someone that could uh, cause some disruption from the interior would go a long way for this team. Look at maybe like a Christian Barmore in the draft. And then safety, just like the Bears, they have their starter. They got Harrison Smith, they got their star. Uh, but beyond that, they got nobody. Anthony Harris set to be a free agent. George Iloko, Played like three snaps for this team, I think, before getting hurt, if that. Uh, but yeah, the, the Vikings have a pretty glaring need there at safety as well. Then the Detroit Lions, wide receiver, a big problem for this team. They did sign Tyrell Williams. I like Quintez Cephas, both those guys a little bit redundant as kind of that vertical threat. And then all these guys hitting the market, Galladay, Amendola, Marvin Jones, even Jamal Agnew, who got some reps in the slot for them last year. A very clear need for Detroit is wide receiver there. And then off-ball linebacker, I put this on there. Jamie Collins is getting up there in age. I don't think they have long-term plans for him. And Jelani Tavai, just, he's nothing more than a thumper. Uh, they do have Sean Dion Hamilton, Jason Cabinda. Some interesting kind of youth there that haven't really broken out <laughs> at any point, but I, I like the, those players' upside. Uh, but losing Gerard Davis, losing Reggie Ragland, I think that's a spot they could invest in. And then interior defensive line as well. You do like Deshaun Hand. You got Nick Williams and Danny Shelton, some kind of run defending veterans there. Uh, but just, you know, they need they need a counterpart. They need someone to uh, be there next to Deshaun Hand. Deshaun Hand also hasn't quite lived up to the reputation he set for himself after his rookie year. And I think he's entering the final year of his contract as well. So that's definitely a, a spot to upgrade for the Lions. Do keep an eye on Deshaun Cornell, though, out of Ohio State with some juice. Then on to the NFC East, the Washington football team quarterback, an obvious need there. They did extend Taylor Heineke. Don't think they're counting on him, though. 
And then wide receiver, similar to a lot of these other teams, you love Terry McLaurin. You got some other guys that you could probably survive with, but definitely somewhere you'd want to upgrade. I like their depth, actually. AGG, Robert Foster, Isaiah Wright. I think those guys can be decent role players, but you need a number two here. You need a true playmaker underneath Terry McLaurin. And then the linebacking group, a sneaky need for this team. I like Cole Holcomb. I even went as far as giving a quality starter tag there. Um, But besides John Bostic, who's just a journeyman, you got some, you know, projects there, Khalid Hudson, Casey Tuhill, but losing Kevin Pierre-Lewis, who was awesome for them, Ruben Foster, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get him back now that he's healthy. And then Thomas Davis retires there, so kind of a sneaky need there for Washington uh, in a system that puts a lot of weight in multiple linebackers. Then the New York Giants, a lot of needs for this team, but uh, at the top of that was interior offensive line. I actually had this at number three before the Kevin Zeitler release, so I still thought this was a big need. And then they go ahead and release Kevin Zeitler. So you got Will Hernandez, who's on the back end of his rookie contract, Nick Gates, who's one of the worst starting centers in the league, and then a bunch of nobodies. So definitely interior offensive line, a big position they can upgrade. Corner is a need for me. It's not like the most pressing thing in the world, but just somewhere they can definitely upgrade. James Bradbury was awesome. Darnay Holmes, I believe in in the slot, but yeah, I think this, this is a team that could really benefit from finding a quality number two. I don't know if that's Isaac Yottam. He was fine. You get Quincy Wilson there, but look for the Giants to maybe grab a day two day, you know, just a day two corner period. Uh, and then wide receiver as well. You, you got Shepard, you got Slayton, you're happy there. there. Uh, but beyond that, you got a bunch of nobodies. So definitely somewhere that they're going to be upgrading, in my opinion. The Dallas Cowboys up next. This has been well discussed corner safety. I mean, my God, they're losing everybody of relevance here. You're going to be leaning on a rookie in Trayvon Diggs, Anthony Brown in the slot, who's been hit or miss. And then at safety, Donovan Wilson was was good at the end of the season. Now you feel okay about him as a starting safety, all things considered, but you're losing three starters here, Awuzie, Lewis, Xavier Woods. You've pretty much you know, lost the entire secondary here. So definitely just glaring needs there in the secondary for them. And then interior defensive line as well. It's really squishy in there. Neville Gallimore, kind of an undersized rookie, did not have a good rookie season. Tristan Hill has not lived up to his expectations. Uh, it's, a, it's like I said, a squishy group in the middle there. They got to upgrade. Then the Philadelphia Eagles, wide receiver, well discussed the, the needs created there by uh, Alshon Jeffrey, Deshaun Jackson getting released and uh, Arthega Whiteside not working out. Now they do get Marquise Goodwin back. You got Rieger, Goodwin, Fulgham. In theory, that group could actually kind of work together, but none of them are quality starters and beyond. So definitely somewhere to upgrade. Common mock draft spot for uh, Devontae Smith and Jamar Chase there for the Eagles. Off-ball linebacker, definitely somewhere they could upgrade. Maybe not the most pressing need in the world, Uh, but uh, a position that could use quality starters for sure. Edwards, Singletary, more run defenders. Davion Taylor, maybe he develops, but I don't think I would be leaning on him to become a quality coverage linebacker in year two. Uh, So there's that. And then cornerback, you got Darius Slay, Avante Maddox. If he could play more of a slot role, I think he's okay. But the depth there is just nowhere to be found. And they don't even have a starter opposite of Darius Slay right now on the outside. So uh, cornerback, a definite need for the Eagles. Then the New Orleans Saints had to make some tough releases today, uh, but quarterback is going to be their top need. Now, Drew Brees, like, might be coming back. I don't even know what the deal is there, but even if he does come back, it's still a need. So I'm comfortable putting this on there. And then wide receiver, very similar to some of these teams we've said. You're happy with Michael Thomas, but certainly could upgrade elsewhere. They just cut Emmanuel Sanders today. It was already a need before that. Uh, And then off-ball linebacker as well. Demario Davis is stud, but he's like 33 years old. Uh, And then beyond that, you got Zach Bond, who's kind of this conversion project. You don't know if he's going to work out. Uh, You had to cut Quan Alexander. Alex Anzalone, a free agent. So pretty clear needs there for the Saints uh, for a team that's overall pretty balanced until they maybe have to make more cuts. We'll see how that all plays out. Then for the Tampa Bay Bucks, this is a tough team to kind of break down their needs because they are, in my opinion, the most loaded, deep, talented roster, but there are still some needs in there. As of right now, Shaquille Barrett is a free agent, so that's going to make Edge a top need for them. You got really Jason Pierre-Paul and nobody else. Anthony Elson, more of a run defender. And then running back to me is a need. Ronald Jones is fine. Really bad in the receiving game, though. And he's also going to be in the last year of his contract. I don't think they have any plans to pay him long term. Uh, So with Fournette, 
hitting the market there. I do think running back is a need. And then interior defensive line as well. You love the fact that you're going to get Vita Vea healthy next year. William Golston, I feel like is probably going to be a cap casualty there, which really makes interior defensive line a need. Maybe they could get Sue or McClendon or even both back for really cheap. Uh, but until they do that, that is going to be a need. Then the Carolina Panthers, uh, just positional value is going to push quarterback up here. You're you're like, okay with Teddy, but they've been very honest that they're looking to upgrade there. Uh, so to me, that's their number one priority for the offseason, which is the purpose of this list. And then cornerback positional value, again, pushing this thing up. You're fine with Dante Jackson, but he has not gotten an extension yet. Corn Elder was good in the slot. Uh, but beyond that, you just, you need, you know, more confidence in this group. Pride, Oliver, Hartsfield, they showed some flashes, but very young guys you're not counting on. Rasul Douglas, an impending free agent, was actually the best corner last year. So maybe they bring him back and try to develop the younger guys. I don't know, uh, but definitely a need. And then tight end, it's pretty obvious they don't have a starter there. Uh, just not the most important position, uh, but uh, maybe we see Kyle Pitts there next year. We'll see. Then the Atlanta Falcons glaring issues at safety. This is an ugly looking group right now as basically all their starters, not basically, literally all their starters are gone. Keanu Neal, Ricardo Allen, Demonte Kazee, all hitting the market. And you've got what a fourth round pick in Jalen Hawkins and a journeyman in TJ Green. So pretty big issues there. And then edge rusher as well. Man, it feels like the Falcons have needed an, usher, uh, an edge rusher since 2012. Uh, Dante Fowler did not work out there. He's not even a quality starter, despite how much they're paying him. Jacob Tuio, two Mariners, decent run defender. But yeah, man, edge rush, safety, brutal, brutal depth charts for the Falcons right now. And then running back is also a need here. Uh, Todd Gurley, luckily enough, that was only a one-year contract for the Falcons, so they're free of that. Uh, but Ido Smith, not really a full-time starter. Decent, like, scat back type. But Quadri Allison, or sorry, Kadri Allison, uh, you need you need a starting caliber running back there for whatever it's worth. Definitely the worst uh, running back situation between them and, and Pittsburgh. Then the Seattle Seahawks. Man, this was hard to see. And you kind of look at this, and it's not necessarily the things that Russell is complaining about, although interior offensive line does make the cut here. But cornerback and edge rush, look at these depth charts. It is disgusting right now. Now, I think they'll upgrade these in free agency and through the draft, but... Their corners right now are Trey Flowers, DJ Reed, and I guess Jordan Miller. Gross. And then their edge rushers right now, LJ Collier, Alton Robinson, and Daryl Taylor. It is just brutal right now with these edge groups. And Pete Carroll, they've got their work cut out with this defense. And then the interior offensive line, pretty ugly too. Now, Damian Lewis, I think when all is said and done, he will be a quality starter. Uh, but it is kind of hard to bank on him with his liabilities and pass protection right now. Uh, so I just gave him a replacement level starter right now, although I do like him. And then you got Phil Haynes, Jordan Simmons. You know, Haynes showed some flashes, but none of these guys are the answer. Ethan Pochick is a free agent as well. So they got to upgrade this interior offensive line brutally bad. And yes, I just said brutally bad. Anyway, the LA Rams, uh, not quite as pressing of needs here, but uh, here's the list. Edge rusher definitely could use some upgrades here with Leonard uh, Floyd hitting the free agent block. I like Terrell Lewis if he can stay healthy. Justin Holland showed some flashes, but their two best guys there are impending free agents, Leonard Floyd and Samson Abukum. I think they could probably get Abukum back for cheap, uh, and you might be able to roll with those guys and maybe a draft pick, but uh, definitely a big need for them. And then linebacker, I just don't like any of these guys as starters. Kenny Young showed some decent flashes. This system, assuming they keep things pretty similar to what they had with Brandon Staley, it doesn't put a lot of emphasis on linebacker. Uh, so you could probably survive with this group, but they could also benefit from hitting on a guy in the draft maybe. And then interior offensive line, I did put it on here. Uh, Austin Blythe is kind of the best of this group. He's an impending free agent. I don't know if they're going to be able to afford him or not. Austin Corbett, David Edwards, I'm cool with those guys at guard, letting them develop, uh, show what they have, kind of continue to develop. Uh, but you could upgrade there as well. But definitely at center is uh, kind of a, a glaring hole at the moment. Then the Arizona Cardinals, after getting J.J. Watt, the cornerback room kind of becoming the biggest point of emphasis here. I like Byron Murphy in year three. Robert Alford, two years in a row, have not been a, has not been able to stay on the field, so you can't really count on him. You're letting Pat, uh, Pat Pete go, Dre Kirkpatrick, so some pretty big needs there at corner. That's been well documented. Interior offensive line would be next for me. You got Pew, you got Justin Murray, okay. Both guys you could upgrade, just kind of replacement level starters. Justin Pugh is, is just a name at this point. He has not been a top, you know, 
quality starter for a long time. And then center is a glaring need. Cole Mason, Lamont Gaylord, do you lean on them to step up at center? I wouldn't. Uh, look maybe through the draft round two, maybe trade down late round one to upgrade at center. And then wide receiver, or you go free agency with like a Corey Lindsay would be amazing here. Uh, and then wide receiver I do include as a need. Uh, obviously you got DeAndre Hopkins, but Christian Kirk, I feel okay about stepping in maybe as a slot guy this year with Larry Fitzgerald finally gone. Uh, so I like that, uh, but you could really benefit from a true deep threat here as well with how good Kyler is at throwing that deep ball. Andy Isabella just he isn't that guy. He just hasn't proved that he can do that in the NFL, and I'm, I'm kind of done counting on him to be that dude. Keyshawn Johnson's fine, but uh, wide receiver, I just think they're missing one piece in that group, but it's a very meaningful piece, so I felt comfortable putting wide receiver on this list. And then the very last team here, the San Francisco 49ers corner this depth chart was eye-opening. I like Mosley, but God, it's just a bunch of like nobodies after him. Look at the free agents coming up here. Richard Sherman, Verrett, Akella Witherspoon, Kwan Williams, and even Dante Johnson played some decent snaps in the slot for this team. So whew, they got their work to do at corner there. Offensive tackle, I feel like they could probably be fine with Brunskill or school at left tackle. Uh, with Trent Williams gone, but why count on that? They've clearly put an emphasis on having a nice tackle duo here just through the draft and going to get Trent Williams and making sure that those are positions that are good to go. Uh, so I do think they'll put a, put a you know premium on that. And McGlinchey is kind of a fringe quality starter star. I just gave him the benefit of the doubt because I like him, especially as a run blocker. Um, but then the interior defensive line was also eye-opening as well. You can maybe even push this ahead of offensive tackle. You're, you're hoping Kinlaw takes that next step in year two. That's all good and well. Uh, but there's no one else next to him. And that was a big part of that uh, Super Bowl run was how good this overall pass rush was from the you know nose tackle outwards. And they just don't have that right now. Thomas and DJ Jones are free agents as well. Kevin Givens played okay last year. Uh, but that's a sneaky large need for the 49ers is interior defensive line. And that's going to do it. Uh, so we got through all 32 teams. Definitely looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments down below. Do you agree with my listings here? Did I miss anything? Definitely let me know. I'm sure I screwed something up. There's a lot of names, a lot of teams, a lot of needs and positions, but uh, I, think we're, I think we're good to go. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Please do hit that like button. Cheers, guys. We'll see you on uh, Wednesday for the live free agent stream. Peace. Peace.